you go back and look at some of the most successful people in the world, one of the things that you'll find among 95% of them is that they win. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the nine habits of the most successful people in the world. And I have done almost 900 podcast episodes. And when I looked back at all of my statistics, this was my number one most downloaded one. Five years ago is when I first put it out. So I decided let's do a updated version of it and see how it still holds, if it holds true. And if there's any changes over the past five years. So let's go ahead and dive in. If you wanna be successful, you should probably, whatever the success means to you, you should probably follow other successful people and do what they do. So if you just write these down and just decide to do these nine things, see where you are in five years. There's a pretty good chance you're going to be where you want to be. So let's dive in. Habit number one, which you've probably thought of, you might do, maybe you try to do sometimes, but habit number one is to wake up earlier. If you go back and look at some of the most successful people in the world, one of the things that you'll find among 95% of them is that they wake up early. And so what I did was I decided to go through and research what are some of the most successful people in the world? And if you look at some of the most successful people in the world, what time do they wake up? So I found a few of them for you. Number one, Jack Dorsey, the guy who started Twitter. He started Square. He wakes up at 5 a.m. in the morning, and the first thing he does is he meditates and then goes for a six-mile run. If you look at Richard Branson, Richard Branson has about a $4.8 billion net worth. He wakes up every single morning at 545 on his private uh, island that he has because the shades go up with the sun. Uh, next person, Tim Cook. Tim Cook, who is the uh, CEO of Apple. Tim Cook has a net worth of about a billion dollars. And Tim Cook wakes up at 5.40 or wakes up at, at 4.30 so that he can be at the gym by 5.30 every single morning. If you look at Howard Schultz, Howard Schultz is the, the, the guy who started Starbucks. He wakes up every single morning at, at 4.30 a.m. so he can walk his dogs and they can go and do a workout. Steve Jobs, who is worth you know, $11 billion when he died, woke up every single morning at the latest at 6 a.m. to go work out. So if you just look, okay, I just gave you, what, four, five, six examples of billionaires who wake up early and usually, seems like most of them go to work out as soon as they wake up. If you just decide, hey, what do these people do? Maybe I should do it. Wouldn't it just make sense to go, huh, maybe I should just wake up early. And now some of you are out there going, oh yeah, but I'm not a morning person. I don't, I'm not a morning person either. But there's also some of you out there like, oh, but I'm a, I'm a night owl, right? There's a lot of studies have been done that found that this, there's no really night owls that are out there. Like if you think about our ancestors 200,000 years ago, like there wasn't, there wasn't some random, one of the random guys sitting by the fire and he's like, no, sorry guys, I wish you could fall asleep when I'm a night owl. Like that's bullshit. So what you're doing is you're realizing that you're not a night owl. You've just habitualized yourself to go to bed at a later hour is what you've really done. And so what you need to do is you need to get in, in, in some of the circadian cycles and start to research that, how to sleep better. Because uh, I used to think I was a night owl until I researched how to become better at sleep. And I realized I'm not a night owl at all, but I'm also not a morning person. But, you know, if you want to be successful, why don't you just do what successful people do? Pretty easy. Number one wake up earlier. Number two, write down your goals. Successful people write down their goals. There was a study done in the 70s at Harvard, and they actually went through, and everyone who was graduating with their MBA, they went through and they did a survey on all of them. And then 10 years later, they followed up on the survey. And one of the interesting things that they found in 1970, all of their MBA graduates, only 3% of them wrote down their goals, which means 97% of them did not write down their goals. When they followed up with everybody 10 years later, those 3% of people who wrote down their goals were 10 times more successful financially than the other 97% combined. Let me say that again. They weren't just 10 times successful. 3% of people were 10 times more successful than the 97% combined. So what does that show you? There's some sort of secret to writing your goals down. There's something different about putting your goals and putting them physical into the world and actually going, you know what, now that they're on this piece of paper, maybe I should start to make a plan. Maybe I should start to figure out how to do this. And so if nothing else, instead of just thinking about your goals, put your goals down on a piece of paper. Get very clear on exactly what it is that you want. So that's number two. Number three is they have work ethic. Now work ethic, just so you guys know, work ethic is not something that somebody is born with. I can speak from, from me personally. I was an extremely, extremely lazy person up until the age of 19. 
Then at 19, I found a place where I wanted to start putting my effort into. Started working for a sales company. And I went, oh my God, I can actually start to make money. I can get, I can not be poor anymore. That would be amazing. And what happened? I started working a little bit harder. And as I started working a little bit harder, I started getting some results. And I was like, this is awesome. Let me work a little bit harder and see if I can get more results. And I did. I started getting more results. I was like, this is awesome as well. And little by little, I didn't even realize it was happening until about three years later, I went from super lazy, like partying, drinking a lot of alcohol, smoking a lot of weed to not doing any of that stuff and working 110 hours a week. It wasn't like I was just born working 110 hours a week, but I was just like, I developed this work ethic and this hardcore work ethic that just stuck and I still have it. And so work ethic isn't something that you're just born with. Work ethic, work ethic is something that you build upon every single day. And so if you want to, you know, start being more successful, whatever success means to you, start working a little bit harder, start working a little bit harder. And what happens is your hard work becomes habitualized and then you just work a little bit harder and you're just stacking. Like if you were just to, just to imagine work ethic being little tiny blocks, you're just stacking work ethic blocks on top of each other. And what you realize is that you start working harder, you go from lazy as hell to a really hard worker. So that's the third thing. They have really incredible work ethic. Number four is that they exercise almost every single day. You have to think about your body. Your body is the most incredible piece of machinery probably in the entire universe. The stuff that it does, the way that it heals itself. If you can think of all of the, the crap that you've put in your, your face over your lifetime, if I think of all of the crap I've put in my face over my lifetime, and the fact that my body still runs, let alone that it still runs really well, is quite amazing to me. But if you think to yourself, okay, if I think about the way that I treat my body, and if I exercise more often, and pay attention to all of those things and, and the way that it works, your body isn't just, you're not just, just born with tons of energy. Some people, yes, they have more energy, but what happens is your body starts the same way with work ethic. It starts to get more energy as you start to use more energy, your body adapts. And so if you're like, you go to the gym for the very first time and you're like, I can't do this anymore because I'm so tired the next day. I'm so tired that day. Well, what happens is your body starts to adjust. Your body's an incredible piece of machinery. And what happens is it goes, oh, it looks like Rob is gonna start needing more energy every single day. Let's give him more energy. And so when you exercise, you get more energy. When you have more energy, it's easier to work harder. It's easier to develop work ethic. So exercise every single day. Humans are not built to just sit down in front of a computer all day long. We're not built to just be stagnant. Like when I think about how stagnant people are, when I heard the word stagnant, I use it on purpose because when I think of stagnant, I think of like a, a dirty pond, like a stagnant, dirty pond with like flies and mold on top of it. Like that's not the way I want to think of my body. And so when you think of being stagnant and just being sedentary all day long, that's not what your body's made to do. Your body's made to move. And the more that you move, the more energy your body will start to make day after day. And so it's super important to think of your body as the temple that it is and go, the better that I take care of it, the more that I exercise, the better that I you know, decide to actually take care of it, it's gonna have a lot more energy if I decide to make sure that it creates energy every day throughout the day. So exercise every day, get your ass up, get moving, go for a walk. If you don't work out at all, go for a walk for a little while, walk a couple miles, walk for 20 minutes, whatever it is you gotta do, exercise and get your body moving. Okay. Successful habit number five is that they read really often. This is a really interesting fact that I found. The average American reads about one to two books per year. I know some people listening to this, myself included years ago, you might not have read any books last year, right? The average CEO, which means that they're, you know, in the top of their company, reads 60 books per year. Just take that in for a second. The average CEO, which means obviously are CEOs busy? Yeah, absolutely they're busy. Probably the most busy people in their company a lot of times but they find time to read. They find time to constantly be growing. They also never think that they're know-it-alls, clearly if they're still reading. And they're reading business books and self-help books and mindset books and psychology books and books that are there. Not they're not just reading like, you know, romance novels or anything like that. They're reading books that are improving them and helping them get better. So what's cool about that is that they read a little bit more on average than a book per week. Think about that for a second, a book per week. Some people don't read a book a year. 
So if you want to be more successful, I don't know if I'd just go straight to reading 60 books per year because you got other stuff to be to be to do to be successful as well. But can you just start reading more? Can you do a book per month? Have you ever cranked out 12 books in a year? What would you, what do you think that you would start thinking? How do you think your mind would be if you started reading a book every single month? Okay, that's tip number five. Successful habit number six is that they plan their week every single Sunday. This is one of the things that I see that 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 very successful people do that the average person doesn't is that it seems like the average person tends to go into their day and they go into their week in reaction mode. They just hope that it goes the way that they want to. They go kind of like, well, I hope this works. I hope I don't have too many fires I have to put out this week. And it seems like the most successful people in the world go into it with a plan ready to execute. Like they go in all guns blazing from the moment the day happens on Monday. Right? So when you look back, what does it look like when you have, you know, a, a Sunday meeting with yourself? It's super simple. You may have heard me say about it before in, in, in way past episodes. Very simple. You look back and you look forward. You look back on last week, see what happened last week, what went well, what didn't go well. And you look ahead to this week and you go through something called stop, start, continue. Stop, start, continue. I got from P Diddy uh, a long time ago, like 10, 12 years ago, he had a show um, and they did stop, start and continue with his team members and stop, start and continue means what do I need to stop doing? So if I'm looking back on last week, I'm in my look back of the look forward. I'm looking back. What do I need to stop doing that I did last week? Oh, I need to spend some less time on Instagram. Okay. What do I need to start doing? Okay. I need to uh, start waking up earlier so that I have more time to get my workout in. Okay. And what do I need to continue doing? No, I'm doing a pretty good job at eating healthy. Okay. Perfect. So you go through and you figure out what you need to stop doing, start doing and continue doing. And you'll look back. And now what you do is you go into your look forward and you look ahead at the next seven days. Take 20, 30 minutes out of your Sunday just to do this every single Sunday. And you start to make a plan of exactly what it is that you need to do to execute, to go into your week, look back, look forward, stop, start, continue. And you go into this week, all guns blazing and executing on the things you need to execute. So successful people sit down and they take it serious enough to plan every single day of their week. And they start that on Sunday. Successful habit number seven is that they are super positive in their self-talk and they practice gratitude. One of the things that you know is what you focus on magnifies. So if you're sitting around focusing on all the things that aren't going well, if you're focusing on all the things that are pissing you off, if you're focusing on all the things that, that are negative in your life, then you're going to find more of those things that piss you off, that make you negative, that aren't going well. But if you sit down and you say, what can I be grateful for right now? What you focus on magnifies. So if I find something to be grateful for, even if it's just, if I have nothing else to be grateful for right now, I have my heartbeat, right? My, my, my lungs are still working. My heart's still working. I'm still here. I have something to be grateful for, right? And if I could start my day and try to live that throughout the rest of the day to practice gratitude and positive self-talk, it's going to carry on through the rest of my day. And if I'm grateful from the morning, what I focus on magnifies, I will find more things to be grateful for and create more things to be grateful for in my life, which is going to create more positive self-talk, more positive thoughts, more optimistic thoughts, less negativity, less pessimistic thoughts, less holding myself back. Make sense? So practice some more gratitude, practice some more positive self-talk. That is number seven. Number eight is that they have mentors. This is something that I see a lot of people don't do. The average mentor, I saw a statistic that came out. So the average mentor bef by, before they become a mentor has had seven different mentors. So the average millionaire has had seven different mentors by the time that they are a millionaire. So if you're sitting there, you have to think to yourself, how many mentors do you have? How many mentors have you had? And so can you go out and find mentors? Do you have people around you that have, you know, a certain aspect of their life that they look up, you look up to? Maybe it's you know somebody has a really good marriage. Can you have a, a marriage and relationship mentor? You know, they don't have to coach you specifically, but just being around them and having conversation with them and meeting up with them once a month, going to get some coffee, having conversations. When you are around people who have the lives that you want and you, you intentionally put yourself around them, you start to hold yourself to a higher standard. When you hold yourself to a higher standard, your life starts to change. So, they have mentors. How many mentors do you have? How can you find more mentors in a relationship mentor, business mentor, money mentor, right? Like I was, I was over at a friend's house the other day and one of my uh, friends, which I would consider a mentor was there as well. 
And uh, he's a big real estate guy. He's worth about $150 million. And I was sitting next to him and I was like, hey, I've got some questions for you about what I should do with this crazy market that's going on. And he's like, hey, well, you know, why don't you just call me this week and we can go get some coffee, right? It's cool to have people like that, but they're all, he's only in my life because I intentionally sought out him. Like I knew he lived in Austin. I, I, and I, I was able to get connected to him and he's become a friend of mine. We go get coffee every once in a while. We don't talk every single day, but if I text him, I know he's gonna text me back, right? Do you have people like that in your life? Mentors in all aspects of your life. Maybe you have a, a, a mentor who's really fit. Maybe you have a mentor who's a really great father or mother. Can you have mentors and a business mentor in every, every area of your life where you want to improve? The average millionaire has had seven mentors before coming a millionaire. And I guarantee you they have more and more and more as their life continues to go on. So they have mentors. And the last habit that I found is that they have proper nutrition and sleep. This is something that I don't think people talk about too much when you think about successful people, right? When we're talking about a few minutes ago about your body, about what your body does, how it works and everything. When you give your body fuel, and not something that's going to slow it down, you have energy to continue to do what you need to do throughout the day. So like, even for me, there's a lot of things that I don't eat throughout the day just because of the fact that I know it's going to steal energy from me, right? So there's certain foods, and can you start being more aware of this, that take energy from you. The most energy intensive thing that your body does is digestion. And so there's certain foods that you're eating that you aren't paying attention to that are stealing energy from you and making you tired then if you're tired, you don't have the energy to do what you need to do to go out and execute on the life that you want. So why don't you start paying attention to stuff that gives you energy and steals energy from you? What's heavy? If there's greasy food, if there's cheese, if there's red meats. Usually those things tend to steal energy from you. That's not something that you want to have during the day. Maybe at night for dinner, if you absolutely have to have it or just get rid of it completely so that you have more energy in everything that you do. And then the last part of that is the sleep. One of the things that I found that's super interesting about some of the most successful people as I was researching them is it's not like they sleep like three to four hours a night. There's a few weird ones out there that only sleep three to four hours a night because their bodies don't necessarily need it. But the average one sleeps eight, nine hours a night. I, was, I interviewed Matthew McConaughey and he said he did nine and a half hours a night. He doesn't sleep less than nine and a half hours per night, right? Well, that guy's pretty damn successful if you think of it. So when you look at it, what is the amount of sleep that your body needs? Do you know? Have you tested it? Have you figured it out? I know for me, I need around seven and a half hours of sleep. I could sleep for 14 hours. I'm really damn good at sleeping, but I only need, only, quote unquote, only need seven and a half hours of sleep. And if I can get seven and a half hours of sleep every single night, I'm good. Some people only need six. What do you need? It's about you figuring it out. It's about you knowing it. And it's about you working towards getting that whatever it is, and in prioritizing your sleep versus being something that you do. Prioritizing your sleep, prioritizing your nutrition as well. So that, those are the nine habits of the most successful people in the world with all the research that I've found. So look at those, write them all down and say, how can I take these and put these into my life? Knowing that the most successful people in the world do this, and if I do this, hey, maybe I could be one of the most successful people in the world as well, or at least much more successful than I currently am. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Good morning, everybody. Today's going to be a beautiful day. I'm just so excited. I want to do it today. I just, I'm just not 100% into it.